name is David Ofori Ajay. I am the editor-in-chief of the Ghana Medical Journal and have been for the last 10 years or so and a member of the African Journal Partnership Project, which I was involved in setting up about 10 years ago. I am an internist by training and a clinical pharmacologist in practice and a professor in the University of Ghana Medical School. I have also been in charge of the country's primary biomedical research institute, the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, for eight years as its director. And I am currently the rector of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons which is a national college responsible for the training of medical and dental specialists. Before we became part of AJPP, the Ghana Medical Journal was not that firm on the ground in the sense that we had problems with manuscript submissions, we had problems with visibility, and we also had problems with appropriate review of manuscripts submitted to the journal. But above all, we also had a problem of regular production to meet our set targets. We come out four times a year, and sometimes we were not able to meet that target. The resources made available to the journal through AJPP has primarily allowed us to establish an editorial office to hire support staff and also to train authors and reviewers and consequently, consequently in the course of time we have been able to regain our regular publications. Our visibility has gone up we think because now we have also managed to get into Medline. Prior to that we were in PubMed Central. So this has increased our visibility and you can determine that from the number of manuscripts we receive per year now. The other aspect of being part of AJPP has been the opportunity we get in meeting other African editors of medical journals and to share ideas and to learn from each other as we progress our individual journals. And I think that is a very important part of AJPP. AJPP has also made it possible to have, for us to have access to technologies that normally would have cost us a lot of money to acquire, but which we now get pro bono. And uh, this includes the facility for XML conversion the online manuscript submission system, and recently opportunities for being hosted in other prominent uh, indexing mechanisms that we think will add to our visibility and project us as a major partner in health publishing in the sub-region. For the Ghana Medical Journal, I, I would look at sustainability from at least two aspects. One is the willingness of the publisher, which is the Ghana Medical Association, to continue to support the journal. And there is no indication that the association will withdraw that support. And so in terms of hard copy printing and other production aspects, that should not be a problem for the next five to ten years, I, I hope. The other aspect of sustainability is irrespective of the publisher's willingness to fund certain aspects, we should also be looking at the journal becoming more and more independent by finding ways of raising uh, financial resources to do its job. And unless we have a business plan built with sustainability as part of the concept, it is going to be very difficult to see how the journal will survive. 
not only in terms of printing, but actually in terms of the quality of its content um, over the coming years. And I think the emphasis in any sustainability plan, we have to place an, a major emphasis on the people who write to the journal and also other opportunities for raising funds apart from what the association or the publisher will provide. Currently, are all other sources of funding apart from AJPP support is the adverts, advertisements that we have in the journal. But they are not substantial. So we start, have to start thinking about financial sustainability and also uh, the sustainability of the publishing business itself. And I think it's critical to any future uh, survival or the, the future of the journal. One of the ways in which we can get CMEs carried out through the journal is probably to set up an electronic version of using the electronic version of, of, of the journal to put CME elements at the end of each article or at the end of uh, each issue and get people to complete it and be awarded uh, CME points. In Ghana, you need to acquire a minimum number of CME credits in order to be recertified to practice medicine. So there is a need for having that kind of business. We could also organize training courses for authors and get CME credits for attending those training courses. But currently, the regulatory body for medical practice in Ghana actually recognizes review of scientific articles and publication of a scientific paper as credit material. So if you're a reviewer for the journal, you can actually get credits for each paper that you review. And if your paper gets published in the journal, you can get credits for the publishing that paper. I think our most successful accomplishment is getting back into Medline. Because the journal was established in 1962. And within two years of its establishment or so, we got into Index Medicus, which is the precursor of Medline. Because from 1975, we were not regular in production and virtually went off the screen, we were taking off Medline. So we had to attempt to re-enter. And that took a while, but in 2011, we were accepted back into Medline which was one clear endpoint of all the development uh, of, the, of the journal. But the more important thing is the role AJPP played in the process of getting back into Medline through the various activities that we undertook in order to enhance our visibility, improve the quality of submissions to the journal, and providing the resources for us to be able to come out on a regular basis, all contributed to our getting into Medline. And I'll consider getting back into Medline as one of our major achievements in the last 10 years. One of my significant challenges is getting reviewers to do a good job and on time. That has been a great limiting step in our production process. And we're trying to find ways of getting reviewers motivated enough to deliver on, on schedule. And awarding them CME points is uh, one way of doing it. Publishing their names at the end of the year in a journal is another way of doing it. And writing letters of recognition to them. And also to, if they work in an academic institution, to their the heads of those institutions, telling them about the great job they are doing for, for the journal. Because I think it's part of the academic assessment of uh, lecturers uh, to show that they are also 
reviewing for journals. I mean, everybody puts it in their CV, but if you get a letter from the editor saying how wonderful this person is, I think it goes a long way in motivating the person to be punctual. Expanding AJPP is good. I also think that we have to be very careful in selecting partners. I recall that when AJPP was, be, was formed in 2003, and there were only four African edit journals in, in the group, a lot of displeasure was expressed by other African journals and African editors as to why those four journals were selected. Of course, they were not aware of the major criteria that was used in selecting those journals. But it set off this thought that how do we bring those other journals to benefit from whatever we were going to get out of this thing. And one of the ways we went about it was to invite them to events organized by AJPP editors. So, for example, when I organized the workshop in Ghana in 2009, apart from the four AJPP journals, or six at that time, four or six doesn't matter, we had a lot of African, editors of African uh, journals, medical journals, attending. And some actually partly sponsored themselves to be part of the, the workshop. <clears throat> and the same thing happened in Uganda when James organized his workshop. He invited journals in the East African area and also West Africa to participate. So that way, AJPP is not so much self-centered or you know, inward-looking, but has always looked out for other journals who require assistance in improving their quality and also in managing the journal. Because I think most of these journals flounder because they are poorly managed. And there is the need, even for journals in AJPP, to have that capability of managing the journal professionally rather than uh, continue in this voluntary mode that the journal has been managed. Practically all the journals are run on a voluntary basis and that sometimes limits the way things are done and how you can do things and do them better, I think so. One of the major challenges we all have to have in mind is a succession plan. If you look at most of the editors, they are not young and relatively. And we have to start thinking about finding young blood to take over from us. Because otherwise, five, ten years down the line, when you are not that active anymore, you have the problems you had at the beginning where you do not have people who are enthusiastic enough to take this, even on a voluntary basis, and continue with the journal. So I think primarily we should always have creating a succession plan and bringing young blood onto the editorial uh, committee and training them in the editorial process so that it's not sprung on them the one day the editor is no longer around and suddenly you have to find a totally new person to come and do the job. I think that's one of the primary challenges that we have. And the other side of, of, the, of the question is the opportunities available. And I think the op opportunities have to be sought within the journal itself because consist persistently looking for opportunities from outside the journal in terms of support for its operations can in itself be a disadvantage because when those support services are withdrawn, you have to, you are left hanging because you have never made an attempt on your own to establish things. What my vision for the Ghana Medical Journal is for it not to be only a journal but an educational platform 
on which you can do other things to help improve the health of the community rather than a focus for academics to publish their work. And that, that would mean that we have to find other ways of disseminating the, informa the scientific information we publish such that the ordinary person will become aware of the changes taking place, re-emphasis on things that we already know but is very important to the public's health, and that would also automatically involve the involvement of media in doing this, and also in the journal changing its way of doing business so that it's not only academic-centered, but is also community-oriented so that we can get an interaction from the public as well as from, from academia. I think we, I, I would like to see Ghana Medical Journal as such, not only as, not only as a journal, but actually as a service as a means of getting health information available to everybody. But the thing is that once you've accepted to do a job and you know what it means, including the fact that it is voluntary, including the fact that it's going to take a lot of your time, if you either decide to do it and do it well or decline the offer. But once you've accepted the offer, you must do your best to make sure that you deliver as expected plus more. And so for me, a greater part of this whole arrangement is time management. Because in producing a journal, you also have to meet your, your schedules. And it is no excuse for saying that I had to prepare for a lecture so I couldn't do it. Which means that your family must also accept the fact that you have this task that you must do. And I think in that regard, I've been lucky. Because it's not every woman who would like to see her husband turn on the computer before he touches his cup of coffee that she has woken up early in the morning to prepare. And sometimes it's like that. At the breakfast table, you get rid of what you have to do for the, for the journal. Then you have time to do your regular work and all the other things. You work on weekends. But the driving force is the fact that I want to see this journal succeed. And I want it to come out regularly, but above all, to make sure that the quality is what is expected of a journal like that. So my motivation is, if you're taking the job, do it well, or don't do it at all. There is the need for governments to recognize the role journals play and probably put a little bit of money behind some of these journals, particularly in countries where you do not have a proliferation of medical journals, but you have one or two key medical journals. Then it should be seen as part of the public health good for them to be able to put some money into it. Unfortunately, because most of these journals are either owned by associations or by academic institutions. The expectation is that they will do that support. But I think we should start making government realize the usefulness of journals in terms of the, the health of, of the public. The other thing that I think is important that we should be looking at um, from the point of view of making sure that the people I, I, I always say that I prefer the expression, the public's health, to public health. I think they are two separate things. And I, my emphasis will be to ensure that the public's health is properly maintained. And I th again, I'm repeating myself probably, but I think the general has a role to play uh, in that arena. And finally, finally, we should really encourage the younger people to be interested in continuing what that has been started. And I think that is very important. We have to find a way of doing this outside of financial motivation or anything like that. I think it's important.